Okay, shall we continue? So, Kubernetes and DCOS or Mesos story. So, I work for, as mentioned, work for Mesos for a solutions, Kubernetes solutions architect. Mesos is widely used by enterprise companies, a lot. But we started to ask for Kubernetes as well. So right now we have Kubernetes running a framework on DCOS. It's totally upstream Kubernetes with so easy install story. So basically you have your private cloud, physical servers, public cloud providers, you have our Mesos part and you have Kubernetes in line with Marathon and with the rest of frameworks. And with Kubernetes on DCS, it's automation, basically. So easily, easy to scale, install, create Kubernetes clusters on DCS. Right now we support only one Kubernetes cluster per Mesos cluster, but it will soon will be, will be multiple ones. So imagine having big enterprise DCS cluster running on your on-prem, like banks, all of them, and you want to have dev staging production cluster and or some companies using Kubernetes cluster per release sometimes, so it will be easy p possible. So this week we are getting the new DCS.11 and that will have as well Kubernetes as GA. So that is simple HA cluster provisioning, scalable Kubernetes, easy way, API access with notification. CS as well supports CNI as Kubernetes, CSI as well, because we involve a lot with, with CSI, Kubernetes storage interface, so all that's available. TLS, easy upgrades of Kubernetes, and disaster recovery, so we can back up and restore our Kubernetes classes running on DCS. So really simple HA provisioning. So who's familiar with Kelsey Hightower, a hard Kubernetes hard way? Cool. Cool. So sorry. So you see, we have loads of things to install. And you have to maintain them as well, make changes. So we made that only with that. This is package install Kubernetes. And you get that all. HCD, HA, Kubernetes HA. And who's familiar with Mesos, basically, more or less? So we have called we have framework and marathon. So framework in works as second scheduler. So Kubernetes framework checks for your HCD. If you one HCD pod went down, that will store for you. So your API part, like controller, went out. So it will store for you. So you don't have to worry about who's big things to anymore to maintain and support them. Okay. Yeah, and soon we'll support public cloud as well. So burst to a cloud, so we'll be able to burst your Kubernetes work to a public cloud uh, DCS agents. So as mentioned, it's totally automated. You always can run the latest version of Kubernetes when you want to easy install. You're running DCS, Kubernetes is as, as, as option. It's not included by default, but easy to install. Totally open source, no forks, nothing, open shift or something. And Basically, 
Max in a week will have a new version after release of Kubernetes. Tested and so how it looks. So we have a TCOS like Mesos part. And you have your workers, your master, you have, you have all public workers which are run on public DCOS agents. So basically you, you can use traffic, expose your in, uh, web apps externally e easily way. And usual add-ons, kubeDNS, kube control, basically kube client, metric server, dashboard, all we get out by default installed. And regarding CI CD pipeline, no difference where your Kubernetes is running on TCS or somewhere else. So provision Kubernetes, yes, DCS package install Kubernetes. So simple provisioning, TLS everywhere. So high available cluster. Authentication to APIs secure. No disruptive Kubernetes upgrades. Nicely upgraded. Um, control plane is first upgraded and afterwards one kubelet by one. Easy, you can use ingress for services. We support right now Kubernetes on Amazon. On Amazon with as a cloud provider and Google Cloud and Azure is coming as well. So if you have DCS running on Amazon, you can leverage Amazon cloud provider services for your Kubernetes. You can add remove kubelets basically by your Kubernetes nodes. Disaster recovery, so easy to restore backup and restore your clusters or maybe clone your cluster if you need to. We're using Heptio, Heptio Arc for that and CNI you can configure well as well, you can use Calico for your network policies and so things like that. Yeah, so upgrading is dumb easy like this. This is Kubernetes update. You specify which version. Of course, it has, that version has to be released as our framework and you get your Kubernetes upgraded. So, but before, so it checks, uh, we check Kubernetes releases closely. So even we start with beta versions and alpha versions before we get released. So the upgrade does back up your cluster first, restores automatically if something goes wrong. So cluster is running. And you can click with, click with things like CLI as well, this is one. Specifying like that, you can with options, you can add more worker nodes to your Kubernetes cluster. So, uh, explain uh, Kubernetes expose, expose the Kubernetes application. So, we totally support Kubernetes, Amazon as cloud provider. So, PVC services, I think load balancers are supported out there. Any ingress control will work out there. Right, uh, can skip. So disaster recovery, so we, as I mentioned, we adopted the ARC from Heptio, which does very nicely backup and restore story. So it's nati natively integrated with the DCS client. So various backup options, provider storage as well in DCS cluster. And resource symbol is DCS Kubernetes store. So for current GA offering, we have simple provisioning, TLS, HA4 cluster, secure API server, non disruptive Kubernetes upgrade, dynamic external ingresses for services, which is even you run on-prem, you can lever leverage DCOS public agents where you can schedule your kubelets. So disaster recovery, CNI. Yeah. And all that supported as well in our, our ecosystem. Helm, Istio, Kubernetes. Uh, Kubernetes is basically we using a lot of things. We replace Hipster with a different metrics because Hipster was working, interfering with DCS 
Docker, so dashboard as well. So we we loads of SIG groups. Cryo is coming as well, a replacement for Docker. We found some issues still not pushing for GA yet. And we can go a lot of different Kubernetes slack -like channels as well. Okay, let's do some real demos. So, for demos, I use all those URLs we can share afterwards. So, let's skip that and it'll be easier. So, I'm going to install, I already have a Kubernetes, sorry, this was running on Google Cloud, basically that's a DCS cluster. So we have 10 nodes, cluster, nine private agents and one public. So all totally free and I don't have anything running here. So right now I'm going to install Cassandra. So backend, this is data. So if you look here, you will see Cassandra starting soon. Yes. Yeah, sometimes I do automatic, sometimes not. So we're getting Cassandra three nodes, basically, or maybe one instance. So basically, that's the. This is basically data, anything big data running on DCS. After we're going to install Kubernetes cluster, install Helm. And we go, I'm going to install the web app, which gets exposed externally. So Kubernetes app connects to your big data running on Cassandra. It's a very simple app, just. Come on. Sorry, the app is here. So basically, it shows the node and nothing else but it. It allows you to connect both. Okay. We have. Yep, green. Cool. So, so we need to install. So we need to install, set up a Cassandra key space and table. And we, so we can use Cassandra SQL command. Ah, in this case, no, no, yes, so we should see more, one more service here. Deploying. Done. So we can exec as well, very similar to Cook control exec. To Cass sorry, to Cassandra. Connect to Cassandra server to client. And we create a new space and table. That's it. Now we have a fully running Cassandra, so back end, big data. Now we need to install. Kubernetes. Using make files, so make install. See, it's shall I make bigger? So that's installing beta version of. 
Kubernetes framework with some options which specify how many kubelets and private public runs and which version of Kubernetes to install. And we can watch nicely in two ways. Where is that? Yeah. So we can watch how it installs here. So we can see a CD is already there, started, pending, and one by one the whole Kubernetes control plane will be installed here, and afterwards nodes. And the same we can see here as well. So all these components, they don't land on the same DCOS agent, so they are spread around. So for HA, if that one node, whatever, sorry, DCOS agent goes down, you won't lose much because you still, each HCD, each Kube API server runs on a different, we can collocate these things together, but not the same kind, so, so it gets spread around. So. That's it, we have a control plane running already, so we're just waiting for kubelets. We have three kubelets, private ones, and one public, because public can, can be used. Uh, yeah, we got, uh, even got core DNS now. Kube DNS got replaced by core DNS. Yeah, we see more. Okay, only left the oh, sorry, not yet, so still waiting for public note and add ons. And in similar way, when you do upgrade, one by one, that will be done. Yeah? No, no, no. It's basically it's more like some features we borrowed. But it's totally upstream Kubernetes. Nothing changed at all. No. But I think Bootcube is dead. Because it, it, it self-hosted Kubernetes, I don't think so. It basically with Bootcube didn't work well. We're trying to import to that in Kube ADM, but I'm not sure what story is. It's not an easy one. Okay, so we have only add-ons left. Oh, sorry, Kubernetes wasn't replaced in this version. It's coordinates used between interaction between Kubernetes and DCOS. So Kubernetes understands DCOS names, names, so we can access any DCOS app by DNS name from which comes from the um, from Mesos. So can you, I think, yeah, cool. So it's complete. So now we have a fully running Kubernetes cluster on top of DCOS. Okay. Now, we need to specify kubectl. Um, 
Fik. So fetching kube control as well, just easy as like that, which uses authentication of your user. And okay. sorry, using K instead of kubeket control, it's quicker. Kube get nodes. Now we should see the Kubernetes nodes or kubelets. Takes a little bit first time because he has to fetch the TLS certificate and all that. Yeah, cool. So we have three kubelets, private and one public. Now, I already have Helm, so Helm in it. That installs and that's my aliases, basically show all namespaces. See, we're getting Tiller installed. Helm version. So we have a client client server running. Now we want to connect install our front end app. Difficult to annoying hand. Replace with my domain here. So let's look to this chart for. So as I mentioned, Kubernetes can talk by DCVS names, so I don't have to specify anything else. Every DCVS app talks the same way as Kubernetes framework. So we can easily connect. It's no way back to Kubernetes framework yet, so DCVS apps cannot, cannot talk to Kubernetes apps yet. That's, that's a feature, basically, request. Now I'm, I'm installing up. The Helm chart. So we see Helm upgrade install, specified name, namespace. That's our public Helm repository. And I set ingress enable true, so that creates ingress control and ingress host. It's my private domain. And Remember I mentioned the notes.txt file, that basically spits that. Sorry, here. So to verify that DS, our detector has started, basically you get this command. Sing them. Cool, so I have my app running five replicas, but of course that's not exposed yet. I cannot access that externally. So if I follow example, I'm going to use Cloud Warp Ingress Controller. Anybody familiar with that stuff? Cool. Love that stuff. Hmm? I was a bit, a different company, but. I love it. So you have to have um, account at Cloudware, Cloudflare, and you have, uh, have to fetch uh, your certificate for, for your warp and running that command. In install another Helm chart. Basically, your, your ingress control will be used uh, warp. And that's uh, cool using Cloudflare Warp. You don't have to have a public node at all. That makes a tunnel back to the cloud bar, Cloudflare, the TLS. And your app is accessible. Now we should see in my DNS. Okay, let's 
see yeah, I think it's running. Because it should create the uh, okay. Let's troubleshoot. it. Second, let me copy. Okay, we can run again our upgrade command. That should fix. Okay, I'm going to delete the release. It's basically good as well, you know. Trouble shooting. I use purge, so it fully deletes the Helm release. And what was the name of Helm release? Right now, totally deleting the Helm release. It's a bit good for, for demos. So yeah. You don't have to do one by one. Whatever it got installed, I think got deleted now. Now just can repeat. See, I don't even have to create a C name for that. It does for you. So if I try 
here. So. Yeah, that's it. So it detects where, what kind of OS you're using, and. Yep. And that's cool as well. You don't. I didn't use any load balancer from Amazon or any public agent from DCS. I'm so using Cloudflare, which is opposite way. Cluster creates a connect tunnel to Cloudflare warp, right? And it's more secure as well. And on, when you're running that on-prem, some companies like that way. Going, so we don't have to worry about opening particular ports. But of course, your policy has to be allow outgoing connections. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. And I forget to start in the Cassandra, all that data. And all that running, you can see Cassandra, Kubernetes, and this one as well. This Kubernetes API proxy is how I'm accessing my Kubernetes cluster. And that exposes API of Kubernetes in a secure way. In a secure way. And that's it. Any questions? Yes, for port forward and accessing like dashboard, you need you still need SSH tunnel only for you. Whereas it's total proper number and it's totally secure. It's based on your user, DCS user. don't support GPU yet, but that will come, yeah. But I like get notes. Oh, come on. It's already two different of type of nodes. We have uh, using different constraints of methods, so this node only lands on public agent of Mesos. You have different labels as well. Or can do describe maybe this one. Because I usually have those aliases cube describe and cube control, so it's oh. no, good, not good note. Yeah. Of course. Cloud for cloud you always prefer core S. But it's up to whatever you run. Because GCS can run on Red Hat, CentOS, Chorus. Chorus or Container Linux soon will get two fra flavors with Red Hat kernel and that. Yep. We'll have two versions. Yep. So we have a Red Hat based kernel for enterprise. Contrary Linux and the usual one. See labels, annotations, so see but it has a label, no type public. 
and you can use that label for your ingress. If that your node is public, it has a public IP address. Yeah, or taint. Whatever it's up to you, whatever, or label, or taint, whatever, whatever you want to use. And you can even schedule your traffic using that. Traffic or any different ingress controller. Any more questions? Yeah, you can kill note and it'll restart. Totally. Yeah, I'm trying to execute you. Yeah. At least you don't kill three of etcd pods. If you kill one, it's fine. It's a, we're using totally what Arc supports. So a full cluster snapshot. I don't think automation is yet there. We have metal that managed snapshot yet. So you can snapshot a total, basically snapshot at CD, and it starts afterwards. When the multiple Kubernetes clusters support, you can cloak cluster, or maybe you wanna do upgrade, you're afraid to do upgrade. You can clone your clusters, basically, and with a restore to a never, newer version of Kubernetes and you restore your apps. And using Git ops version, when your old version is, ops version is starting Git, you can easily restore a cluster state or restore from Arc, whatever. Now it's something. Yeah. So I can, I can share my slides afterwards and whatever I use it's here. I would DCO as quick start. Basically you can use Azure Coop, DCO, um, GCP or Amazon to bootstrap Kubernetes cluster on DCO as an easy way using this quick start. Open source one of course. And example apps and cloud for our link and charts I used. All I think is open source basically. 
Nothing hidden. Thanks, Rimos. Um, just quickly, I guess we're setting up. Will that take you take you long to get running? No, already 